Because the last time that you were on with us, and it's always good to get a top financial advisor's perspective on things, you said you were, quote, quote unquote, way overweight growth. So where are you today now that these big tech earnings are, are in the books? We're starting to look forward. We're a, little, we're a little bit less way overweight growth, but we still believe growth is the place to be going forward. So investors have to realize that there are strong pre- and post-COVID tech trends that will remain in place and only accelerate. Digital engagement's going to increase, 5G, cloud, online commerce, software. And all these trends are accelerating now, and they were pulled forward by COVID. So when you think about where your portfolio wants to be positioned over the next three to five years, it's very important to look at these demographic shifts and a lot of the trends that are deeply rooted and accelerating. Yeah. Pete, you know, if you, if you look at what's happened from big tech over the last week or so, there's, there's every reason in the world why somebody would want to stay with that trade, right? D doesn't, you know, <laughs> Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and then really Alphabet, which seems to be the standout, has just showed you this is why you've been in this trade and this is why you want to stay in this trade. Yeah. I totally agree with you, Scott. I mean, I, we kept hearing people come on all the time saying, oh, yeah, it's a rotation out of growth. We're all going to value. I never bought into that trade. I, I, I think you always want to have quality first, and quality for me still stands out with technology, and these technology stocks just continue to surprise, and the numbers just continue to get bigger and bigger, and the strength that we've seen out of that. You look at the, you look at the XLK, or you look at even just the individual names like you just mentioned, whether it's Microsoft or Apple, they ran into earnings. Sure, they had a little bit of a pullback, but we've had a nice, uh, a decent little bounce so far, and take, take a look at Facebook. I think that these names all continue to move to the upside. I agree with Rich. He's talking about overweight. I think you got to be overweight in, this, in the areas where you can find quality, you can find growth, and you don't have all as much nervousness as you do in some of these others. Um, I still think there's plenty of upside to come here in the technology space. I mean, Shan, you know, you, you own both a uh, Amazon and, and Alphabet. And Alphabet, which has been a laggard over the past few years, uh, knocked the cover off the ball. Stock hits a new high today. Uh, the street is tripping over itself now to raise price targets on it. you got the first $3,000 price target uh, on Alphabet. That's uh, over at Susquehanna, reiterates their, their positive view. That's a 56% upside. 56%, 3,000, the price target. You know, when you go down the list of the other target bumps, you go back to 2550, 2500, you know, and so on down, maybe a couple hundred, few hundred bucks from there. 3,000, is that possible? It certainly seems possible. I mean, I think if we were talking six months ago, you'd be shaming me for not being in some of these hotter technology names um, that were associated with work from home. But I think, you know, Pete makes a great point. You've got to look at the quality of your portfolio. And if you think about just the massive amount of capital expenditure that these tech companies have been able to, to make into their businesses over the last several years, sure, there have been some losers. But there have been some winners, too. And I think <clears throat> homegrown innovation, which is what these companies have focused on, I think that allows them to create the platform and the foundation within their business to be able to go out and grow. And so we don't, we're always looking at what they're acquiring, where they're tucking in, what technology they're acquiring to be able to improve their products and you know, get more of their, the wallet share and the total addressable market for their myriad of different areas of emphasis. But we're looking at the wrong thing. We should be looking at what they're doing internally that is creating synergies in these businesses that can continue to drive higher profits and better earnings over time. And so, you know, I think if you're thinking about it just from a stock market performance perspective, are there going to be outperformers and underperformers in this group? Are these technology stocks going to continue to outperform the index through, you know, the foreseeable future? Not necessarily. They may trade more in line with the index, depending on what's happening from an economic perspective. But they're certainly going to be able to continue to grow their earnings. And if your investment process is focused on that, these have to be in your portfolio. Michael, what about valuation? You know, as, as you've had multiple expansion, you you've certainly have had, based on what their historical average has been, you, you've had a, a, a bump up in the valuations of, of the fangs. Now, because they traded sideways and some traded lower from September until a short time ago, some of the valuations came down. Is Alphabet too expensive here now or not? It's fully valued, Scott, I think. 
And it's, you know, so it's growing earnings. And it's got earnings growth that is well superior to the S&P 500 average. And I mean well superior. So you pay a premium for that premium growth. One of the biggest sins I think an investor can commit is Malthusian thinking. Uh, just sort of finding an investor can commit is Malthusian thinking. Uh, just sort of finding a, some sort of straight... I think that Google just proved over the course of the past year with the challenges of COVID and everything else, how they've been able to pivot, how they've been able to innovate, how they've been able to find revenues in new places and adapt. When a company can do that and continue to grow, I think you have to look at new opportunities for growth for that company. So I've owned Google for a long time. It wasn't a great performer last year. But longer term, their ability to create and capture revenues and even expand what was thought to be beyond their previous total addressable market is now actually bigger. They're able to gain in those markets. It's very hard to bet against these companies that are able to grow the way these companies are able to grow.